Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for March 5th. March 5th is the 64th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 65th in leap years with 301 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is will-o'-the-wisp. Will-o'-the-wisp is usually a noun but can also be an adjective and refers to a delusive or elusive goal. What in the world does delusive mean? (laughs) Delusive is an adjective that means likely to delude or constituting a delusion, so it's tricky. It's going to fool you. Will of the wisp is something that looks promising, but it will trick you, turning out to be nothing. There's actually a natural phenomenon that tends to take place in marshy areas, a phosphorescence caused by decaying plants in, as I mentioned, marshy areas. Swamp gas. <laughs> Long time ago, in an effort to try to explain this phenomenon, it was thought to be a sprite, elf, or ghost that carried a wisp of light. If a lost or foolish traveler tried to follow that light, he was likely to not find the light or its source and to find himself lost. The phenomenon was known in Latin by a term that meant foolish fire. The will part of the phrase was a nickname for William rather than an intention, so they were personifying this phenomenon rather than describing it as an intention. Over time, the meaning of the term will-o'-the-wisp evolved to mean any impractical or unattainable goal. First known use of the term will-o'-the-wisp was in the 1660s. Will-o'-the-wisp. Now remember, if you have a word you'd like us to examine in this Word of the Day segment, do drop it into the comments there and we'll take a look at it. And with that, on March 5th of 1616, some 73 years after his death, Nicholas Copernicus's book on the Revolution of the Heavenly Spears was added to the Index of Forbidden Books. You see, he had actually observed that the planets in our solar system revolve around the sun rather than everything in the universe revolving around the earth. But the religion of the day simply couldn't tolerate science that conflicted with religious dogma. This is the birthday of English actor Rex Harrison, born March 5, 1908. He got measles as a child and lost most of the vision in his left eye because of it. Rex Harrison began his acting career at the age of 16 in a stage play, and I counted nearly 50 film roles between 1930 and 1982, nine television roles, 17 theater roles, not counting that one when he was 16. Oh, and five radio dramas. He was nominated for and won many awards for his acting, was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II, and has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And here are a couple of other interesting bits of trivia regarding Mr. Harrison. The voice of little Stewie Griffin (laughs) on uh, The Family Guy was modeled after Rex Harrison's portrayal in the movie My Fair Lady. (laughs) And after Mr. Harrison passed, the CIA used a mold of Rex Harrison's face to make masks to disguise their operatives in various covert operations. Rex Harrison lived to the age of 82. Now, If you're curious about what else I might have talked about in an episode for this date from a previous year, I'll certainly leave a link for you. In honor of the birthday of Rex Harrison, let's have a song he sang in the movie My Fair Lady. I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face was written by Frederick Lowe and Alan J. Lerner, and it was written specifically as a show tune for the play and then was also performed in the movie. It's been covered by, my goodness, dozens of artists since then. And in the story of My Fair Lady, Professor Higgins has been absolutely successful in his goal of teaching a cockney flower seller to speak so well that she could pass as a duchess in Edwardian London. Once they're done, she goes off, presumably, to live her best new life as a fine, cultured lady, and he realizes he's come to feel quite attached to her, like breathing out and breathing in, and he misses her already. I won't spoil it any more than that. If you haven't seen My Fair Lady, I encourage you to go watch it for the rest of the story. I don't see the movie for free anywhere, but it's fairly inexpensive to rent, about $3.99 on YouTube or Amazon. Or, 
I've included a link to just this song on YouTube for free. I've grown accustomed to her face from my fair lady. <laughs> All righty. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that's called No Really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, A Bit Shoot, and Odyssey. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time. This is the birthday. I didn't get that. Could you try again? I wasn't talking to you. Me and my mouth. <laughs> John, me are you kidding me? Okay, hold on. We got to make that be quiet. You got to read what's, read the black part. <laughs> Hi there and welcome to this day in history for, oh, where's your microphone? Okay. We don't want to say the same thing twice. Oh, get your microphone. <laughs> what is it with you and this microphone? Okay, here we go. Okay, we are still recording. That's great. Okay. How about that? <laughs> well, I have a lot to edit today. Cacophony is a sound. <laughs> Cacophony is a noun that you got to read it the right way. Let's start over. <laughs> <laughs> it's eight o'clock so all of the reminders are going to be dinging i forgot to turn those off <laughs> okay stop it don't alienate people who can be helpful to you flinging happiness all over the place all right back to work I think we got it this time.